Hello, good afternoon, DTE 3A and Professor Degaas. For today's lesson, I am with my fellow group meet, Stephanie Cruz, and we will going to discuss today the pickleball. Before we go jump into the discussion, let's first watch this video for today's energizer. Since you are all energized this afternoon, I guess let us now start the discussion, right, Steph? Pickleball is a simple paddle game played with a baseball-sized wiffle ball over a tennis-type net on a badminton-sized court. Scoring. Only the serving team can score points. Points are scored by legally serving a ball that is not returned by the opponent or by winning the rally. Pickleball was invented in 1965 by three fathers named Joel Pritchard, Bill Bell, and Barney McAdoo. They made the equipment from the game by their hands from the items that is lying around their houses and use their rules from the game's tennis, badminton, and table tennis to create a fun new game for their families to enjoy. Despite the name pickleball has nothing to do with the actual pickles, some claim that the name pickleball came from Richard Cocker Spaniel, whose name was Pickles. However, that family dog who made his debut two years after they invented the sport got named from the game. 
pickleball is almost equally as popular among men and women, with 53% of players being male and 47% being female. So now let's go jump into the Did You Know session. Did you know that pickleball has its own national governing body? The United States of America Pickleball Association or USAPA which regulates professional play for the sport. The sport's popularity across the world led to the creation of the International Federation of Pickleball, helping to regulate the sport in countries like US, Canada, France, Great Britain, and Spain. Also, did you know that the first permanent court for pickleball was built in 1967? Like tennis, pickleball can be played as both a singles and double sport and has rules that allow team withstanding players and wheelchair players to play each other. More than 3 million players play pickleball in the United States and that number has been growing by more than 10% each year over the past decade. Since we already know the brief history of pickleball, let's now go jump into the equipment used in playing pickleball. Equipment used in playing pickleball When playing pickleball, each player will need a pickleball paddle, which is smaller than a tennis racket but larger than a ping pong paddle. Originally, paddles were made only from wood. However, today's paddles have evolved dramatically and are primarily made of lightweight composite materials including aluminum and graphite. Players will also need a net and a pickle ball. The ball is unique, with holes through it. Different balls models are intended for indoor and outdoor play. Balls come in several, several colors, including white, yellow and green, but must be a single color to meet the International Federation of Pickleball or IFP specification. The next is Pickleball Court. The Pickleball Court is 20 by 44 feet long, including the sidelines and end courts, all out of bound areas. The size will provide enough room for the players to move around and prevent damage from mist or wild balls. In actual game and tournaments of pickleball, they use variety of equipments including the pickle bags and backpacks, pickleball paddle cover, hydration and supplements, injury prevention and recovery equipments, glasses, books for those um, players that don't know the rules and regulations. Pickable jewelry, court accessories, paddle grips, pickable training aids, pickable gifts, and tournament products. Since we are all done in the equipment, let's now go jump into the rules and how to play the pickleball. So now, let us first watch this short clip for more information on how to play and the rules of the pickleball. Pickleball is played on a badminton sized court, 20 feet by 44 feet. The net is 36 inches high and divides the court down the center of the short side of the court. Nearest the net, each side has a 7 foot non-volley zone called the kitchen. Beyond the kitchen, the rest of the court is divided into two equal sections called the right and left service areas. Each player uses one pickleball paddle and the game is played with one regulation pickleball ball. Serves must be made diagonally, starting behind the right hand service area and alternating each serve. The server must keep both feet behind the back line when serving. To serve, call out the score, then you must drop the ball with one hand and hit it with the paddle with an underhand swing below your waist. The ball must be hit in the air, it may not be bounced then hit. The ball's first bounce must be in the diagonal opposite service area on the opponent's side of the court. At the start of each new game, the first serving team is allowed only one fault before giving up the serve to the opponents.
After that, both members of each team will serve and fault before the ball is turned over to the opposing team. When the receiving team wins the serve, the player in the right-hand court will always start with the serve. Each time the ball enters your side of the court, your side is allowed one bounce and one hit to get the ball back over the net to the opponent's side. A player on your side is not allowed to hit the ball twice, have both players hit the ball, hit it into the net, hit it out of bounds, fail to get the ball over the net, or let the ball hit your side twice before you hit it. If you do, then you fault. After the serve, there is a double bounce rule that requires both teams to let the ball bounce once on their side before they can hit it. A volley means to hit the ball while it is in the air without letting it bounce first. After a fault, the server switches sides to serve from. In a 1 vs 1, the opponent switches receiving sides too. In a 2 vs 2, only the server and his teammate switch sides for their serve. Their opponents stay where they are. In a 1v1 and the very first serve of a game, after one fault, the serve switches to the opposite right service area. In a 2v2, after the very first serve of the game, after the server side's faults, the server and teammates stay where they are, and the teammate becomes the server. At the next fault, possession of the service changes. As one of the rules of the pickleball, pickleball is played on a badminton size court size 20 by 44 feet. The ball is served diagonally starting with the right hand service square of the player and points can only be scored by the side that serves. We must remember in playing pickleball, players on each side must let the ball bounce only once before volleys are allowed and there is a 7 foot no volley zone on each side of the net to prevent spiking. The server continues to serve alternating service courts until or she falls. The first side scoring 11 points and leading by at least 2 points wins. The pickle ball serve. Serves are to be made diagonally, starting the right hand service square and alternating each serve. The serve must clear the 7 foot non volley zone in front of the net and land in the diagonal service court. Serves should always be done underhand with the paddle below the waist. And the server must keep both feet behind the back line when serving. The ball should be hit into the air without being bounced. The serving line will continue to serve until the, there is a fault in the service, at which point the service will be given to the opposing side. For more information about the pickleball serve, let us all watch this short Today video. I'm going to show you how to hit the underhand serve and also how to hit it a few different ways to give you a competitive advantage. There are three rules you have to follow to have a valid pickleball serve. The first one, you have to use an underhand motion. The second rule, you have to hit the ball below your waist, which is defined by your navel. The third rule is the paddle face has to be below your wrist when you strike the ball. Following those three rules, there's four basic serves you can use in pickleball. The first one is the just get it in serve. Starting low, finishing high, that's what the beginners are going to want to use. Until you can get 20 out of 20 in a row, stick with just getting the serve in play. Once you've mastered that, you'll want to work on a lob serve, which is simply falling through a little higher, hitting the ball a little harder and deeper. The benefit to a lob serve is now your opponents have a choice to make. Do they want to swing hard? Do they want to swing soft? You'll be surprised how many times they hit the ball in the net or they hit it long trying to compensate for your lob serve. The third type of serve is the power serve. That comes down to using your torso and twisting and also lifting up. So it's kind of like this motion. By hitting a hard serve, you will steal a few points here and there. But basically, it's to put more pressure on your opponents. The fourth serve you can hit is the angle serve going just beyond the kitchen, angling off the courts. You want to hit this serve if your opponents are slower or if they're using stacking techniques against you. It's more of an advanced serve, so be careful if you're an intermediate player, more of an advanced serve to hit. So work on those four serves, get a hopper, try to master all four of them, and you'll see your game improve. The next 
is volleys. To volley means to hit a ball in the air without first letting it bounce. So in pickleball, this can only be done when the player's feet are behind the non-volley zone line, which is the 7 feet behind the net. Just take note that a fault is a fault if the player steps over the line on his volley follow through. Double bounce rule, also called the two bounce rule. Each team must play their first shot off of the bounce. That is, the receiving team must let the serve bounce and the serving team must let the return of the serve bounce before playing it. Once these two bounces have occurred, the ball can either be valid or played off the bounce. To know much further, let us watch this video about double bounce rule. Hi, it's Joel Calandrillo, Pickleball Health Coach. We're going to talk about the two bounce rule. So I'm serving right now to that side, cross court to that other box. I have to serve, the ball has to bounce into that box. And before me or my partner could hit it, it's got to bounce again on this side. So we can't hit it on a fly. That is the two bounce rule. So the next is fault, and a fault is committed when the ball is number one, touches any part of the non-valley zone on the serve including the lines, second if it is hit out of bounds, third if it is does not clear the net, fourth if it is volleyed from the non-valley zone, and lastly if it is volleyed before a bounce has occurred on each side. So for more information, let us just all watch this short video about fault. The serve may not land in the opponent's kitchen or the kitchen's line. If it does, it is a fault. Let us now proceed on the rules on how to get scores in pickleball games. How to get scores in pickleball? First, a team shall score a point only when serving. A player who is serving shall continue to do so until a fault is made by his or her team. If playing doubles, each player on a team shall keep serving until their team makes a fault. Then, the serve moves to the opposing team. This is called a side out. The game is played to 11 points, however, a team must win by 2 points. The next rule is the double play positioning movements. In this one, the server serves from the right hand side of the serving team's court diagonally across the court to the receiver in the opposite right side of the court. We must remember that the receiver must let the ball bounce before returning the serve. It is important that the serving team must also let the return bounce before playing it, which is the double bounce rule. After two bounces have occurred, the ball may then either volleyed or played off the bounce until the fault is made. For more information about this rule, let us all watch this short clip. Hi there, it's Mark from Third Shot Sports. So imagine this, you serve, the ball comes back, and you've got to play a third shot. Okay? Once you hit that ball, where should you and your partner move? Well, the answer is, it depends. If you hit the ball high, you don't want to go forward to the kitchen because your opponents are going to have a good chance to hit the ball hard and hit the ball down. So it's important if you hit a ball high to stay back to defend. If, however, you play a ball that's either going to be low, forcing a low volley, or better yet, dropping in the kitchen, that is then a safe opportunity for you and your partner to go forward to the net. Okay? Let's take a look at how the pros do it. On the near side of the court, we have Christine McGrath and Matt Staub. McGrath just hit her third shot drop. They have to now decide, was it short enough to land in the kitchen to allow them to go forward? It was. Here's another example of them assessing the quality of the third shot drop. On this point, McGrath chooses to drive the ball with her third shot, so it's smart for them to both stay back together.
Now that they're pinned behind the baseline, they're in a defensive position. They have to hit a shot that drops into the kitchen so they can move forward. Again, they attempt to get it short enough in the court that they can move forward, but until they do, they have to stay back. Finally, they hit one short enough to allow them to move forward. Even the pros don't always make the perfect decision all the time. At this point, they're okay. They hit a reasonably good shot and can move forward a little bit. You see that they're aligned with one another. This is where things start to fall apart. McGrath thinks that her shot was better than it actually was. She starts to move forward to the net. You can see here that there's big separation between the two of them. McGrath is now in a poor hitting position and consequently sets up her opponents for a win. Here's another example of a mistake. You start to see that McGrath moves forward too much. She's not able to defend from that position and consequently they lose the point. You don't always have to do the decision making by yourself. Listen very carefully to McGrath right now. McGrath telling Staub heads up was her way of saying that her third shot drop was too high or too deep and he should get ready for a hard hit ball. That way, they're both able to stay back and defend and eventually transition from a defensive position into an offensive one. So there you go. If you play a low ball to your opponents or drop it in the kitchen, you and your partner can safely proceed up towards the net. If, however, you send your opponents a higher ball that they're going to have a good chance to volley, it's smart to stay back and try to defend. That's all for today's lesson. Thank you, Stephanie Cruz. I hope you learn and enjoy for today's discussion. Until we see you next time, bye-bye!